we can spend hours just talking about what are all the other things that make a great cook, right? Well, just give me two or three things that come to mind. The other well, things that people don't consider. Other things is, you know, you need to have a, you need to have a kind of understanding of, of your place. I call it humility, understanding who you are. And, um, you know, these days go in and the, the skill of cooking is definitely, it's definitely something that is, uh, powerful. It's, uh, it's uh, liberating. It's freedom. If you can go in and rock a station one night and you're busy, there's definitely a lot of, there's a lot of energy running through the kitchen. Um, but the, the, the things that other people don't really, that you, you need to remember is like, have a sense of understanding who you are in the place, right? Like, it's not all about you. You know, I don't, I think when I was coming up, I thought it was all about me, right? No, it's about the guests. It's about the customer. It's about the people experiencing our food, you know? Um, uh, understanding how you fit in a team. You know, this is a team sport. And if anyone tells you different, they're, they're not teaching you proper. It's a team sport from the dishwasher to the, to the newest line cook, to the longest line cook, to the sous chef, to the chef tea party, to the executive sous chef, to the executive chef, and straight down the same line in the same brigade on the other side. Uh, it's a team sport. And, you know, to understand that, and if you can get that big picture look, you know, take those blinders off. I think that's something that really helps people understand cooking. And then, then the, pe- the thing that I find, and this is the part that we really – I think we're really lucky. Um, I work, I have a lot of great uh, uh, guys who, uh, and gals who came up with me. Um, we teach a lot about numbers, the business side of this. Cool. I mean, this is, a, this, is a, this is a penny, pickle, pinch business. There's a fine line between success and failure. It's about razor thin. You know, you, you know it, there's, no, there's, not, there's nothing that gets by that's not really important. Now, great, you're a great cook, but if you screw up a dish, and you keep throwing away the chicken tenders or you keep throwing away the flame and yellows, you're overcooking them. We ain't going to be around very long. Yeah. So, you know, why those are the three things that I point out that make a great cook. Why, why, why is it so important to actually, to not just say, Hey, it's important that you don't waste that chicken, but how far do you take it with letting them know about the numbers? Like we're, we're like to paint the picture of what letting them know about the numbers looks like. How far yeah. do you go with, with that educational piece? I feel like we prepped each other, but we didn't. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, a operation that we go through here. We call it bread plates, right? I'll take a hundred bread plates. We do, we have, we have meetings every day, but uh, quarterly we have like bigger meetings with all the staff. We have about 222 employees and we'll stack the bread plates. Once a year I do the bread plate deal. So I stack the bread plates up and I take a PL from one of the restaurants and I say, okay, Johnny, remove 37 bread plates. That's labor. Okay, Susie, remove, you know, 30, 30 bread plates. Okay, that's cost of goods, right? Remove 10 bread plates, Joe. Oh, that's, that's rent expense. Okay, remove 10 bread. You get my point, right? We go all the way down. Sometimes there's one bread plate left, right? And that's a 10% profit, right? Yeah. So, so you look at it or, they, or it's a 1% profit. So, you, you know, you, you just, they kind of put their eyes on that kind of thing. Yeah. And I'm like, every time, so every, and we always make a joke. Because you want to keep it light for these people, right? A lot of people are, are, are first-time cooks or they're not understanding it. But people have been around. Every time someone breaks something, they go, bread plates. Or every time someone makes a mistake, they go, bread plates. Because I would say, hey, if we get to a certain level, I'll close the restaurant and we'll all go to Italy. You know, and I just, you know, and I, I meant it for a few years. But we never got there, you know. They well, was, they, they, I, I can, like, picture you, like, taking that last plate that's left that's for you, and then you just drop it. To yes, make a point, yes. it shatters. You go, well, there goes our profit, and it's, it's profit. the image, right? It's like the every little thing. Can... Yeah, I heard of a guy doing that with hundred dollar bills, but I'm not that rich yet. So. <laughs> so let's get back to your story. Thank you for getting into that, by the way. Huge lesson. If you enjoyed this video, please help us out. You can do it by liking, sharing, subscribing, and hitting that bell icon. It really helps out. And don't forget, there's a complete archive of every episode with show notes at restaurantunstoppable.com.